dependent sources behave just like independent voltage and current sources, except that their voltage or current depends in some way on another voltage or current in the circuit. In this video I will be explaining how to set up circuits in AWR which contain voltage controlled voltage sources. First of all let's create a new circuit schematic which we will call dependent voltage source. Then we press Ctrl L and in the search box we put VCVS voltage controlled voltage source. You can see that we can choose between four of those but the one that is most useful to us is VCVS2. The others have got too many parameters to set up and there are parameters that we don't need. So let's double click on VCVS2 and then place it on the schematic like so. Our control source has two main parts. A control variable, in this case a voltage, let's call that VX, and a voltage source whose value depends on VX. More specifically it is equal to a factor M times VX. In AWR, control sources comprise of two main parts. An input, which is used to measure the value of the controlled variable, in this case a voltage, and an output, which is what you normally see in circuit schematics in my lecture notes or in the book. In AWR, the output of the controlled voltage source comprises of an ideal voltage source in series with a resistance. This is done in order to model non-ideal sources, but we don't need known ideal sources at the moment, so we can just stick to ideal sources by simply setting the value of R2 to zero. We mentioned that the input of the voltage source is used to measure the control voltage. How is this voltage measured? Well, it is done by simply placing the resistor R1 in parallel with the element which has got the control voltage across its terminals. But in order for R1 to measure that voltage without affecting the behavior of the circuit, its value should be infinite. And we can do that by setting its value to zero in AWR. You can see that for R2, zero means zero, but for R1, zero means an infinite resistance. So when here we have R1 set to zero, we effectively have R1 as an infinite resistance. If we put it in parallel, with the element which has got the voltage that we want to measure, there will be no current flowing through it, so it will not affect the operation of the circuit, but it will be in parallel with that element and hence measure the voltage that we want. An important point to make is that at the input, the voltage should be measured with the right polarity. So in this case, terminal one is the positive terminal or the arrow head if we use arrows and terminal two is the negative terminal or the arrow tail if we use arrows. At the output, of course, the polarity is obvious because it is indicated by the plus and minus signs. So let's try to set up a circuit in AWR, which comes from your book. In order to set up this circuit, firstly, I'm going to right click on this element and then rotate it so we can get to a configuration which is as close as possible in the way it looks to the circuit schematic that we're seeing in the picture. And then I will connect all the other elements which are in the circuit schematic around the voltage source. At the moment I'm only looking at the output of the voltage source and this is what you should do as a first step. And then think about the input and how you get the control voltage later on. Okay, so now we've connected up our circuit, including the voltage controlled voltage source. Now there are two things that we have to set up. Firstly, we have to measure the control voltage, which in this case is V0. So the control voltage is such that its positive terminal is on this side of the resistor. So we connect that to terminal one of the controlled voltage source and its negative terminal is on this other side of the resistor, so we connect that to terminal 2 of the controlled voltage source input. The last thing left to set up is the factor by which the control voltage is multiplied. In this case, on the schematic, it says that that factor is 2, so we have to set M to 2. Having done all this, we simply right-click on the schematic name, we go to Add Annotation, and we add annotations for current and voltage. Before we simulate, we'll change a couple of things. We'll go to Project Options and change the units of the current to amps. And also, as you may notice, we don't have a ground reference in here. So we need to add a ground reference somewhere. So I'll press Ctrl G and then place the ground reference right here. Now simulate. You can see that the results that you got are identical to the ones that you got in the book. But also, importantly, you can see that at the input of our voltage-controlled voltage source, there is no current flowing through R1. 
which means that that resistor does not affect the operation of the circuit at all, which is exactly what we want.